Now, there is a word there. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own loss. And that and is care. That is drawn away of his own loss. That is enticed. That is enticed. All right? Now, to be enticed is used for to be enticed. If you observe, when we started looking at the motion of sin, it didn't start from sin. It didn't start from sin. It began with desire. It began with uncontrolled desire. It didn't start from sin. It began from uncontrolled desire. So now he summarizes verse 13 and then 14, no sin. Look at 13 again. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Alright? No Satan there. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own loss and enticed. There is no sin in verse 14. There is still no sin. He's drawn away of his own loss and he is enticed. No sin. He starts with a desire, but the desire had no check. The desire had no check until it became uncontrolled. The word enticed, the word he is enticed is the Greek word eleazo, E-L-E-A-Z-O. Whenever it is used, it means something is hidden. Entice means like a bait. There is something behind it. It's like you put together a trap for a rat. And then you put meat on top of the trap. And you use meat to cover the trap. That meat that covers the trap is enticed. Because when the rat comes to the meat, the coming to the meat is the coming to the trap. So behind the meat is the trap. When you see the word entice, behind the entice is the trap. Drawn away of his own lost and enticed. It's used in 2 Peter chapter 2, 4 and 18. You can write down for personal study. So something is hidden in the desire that the person who wants it cannot see. Don't forget, God cannot be involved in it god does not tempt and god is not tempted so all of these motions is within the activities of a man without the interference of god or even the interference of satan it is man it is man that is drawn away it is man that has the lost it is man that is enticed. It is man. All right. Now, please pay attention. It is man. But something is hidden in the desire that James now explains. Give me that verse 14 and 15. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. When lust has conceived... The word conceived is the Greek word apotelio, A-P-O-T-E-L-E-O. -E -E it means when lost is fully done. That means there's a process. You look at it, you want it, a process is on. At that point of wanting, there is no sin. At the point where you want it, there is no sin. Because even Jesus was tempted to a point where he didn't want it he didn't want it i don't want this cup but that was not seen so to the point where you want it it is still not a sin it is still not a sin that you want something that is not right doesn't make it a sin but when it is full when you are want becomes full to a point where there's no more control. Where there's no more control. The resultant effect of lack of control will be performance. It will be execution. It is at the point of execution that it is seen. 
Okay? Now, Luke chapter 13 verse 32 shows you the use of the word apotelio. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cares today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. I shall be perfected. There shall be a performance. A full performance is given. So temptation starts with a desire. But now is fully formed. Now, when a temptation starts with a desire to a point where that temptation is fully formed, what does it produce? Talk to me, church. What does it produce? It produces sin. It's not Satan that produced the sin. It was man's desire. It was not God that produced the sin. It was man's desire. And sin, when it is finished, produces what? Death. So lust is conceived. And when it is conceived, it brings forth sin. Sin, when it grows, it brings forth death. That is the motion of sin. So now you discover that God is not involved at all. So death comes by sin. Uncontrolled desires come from desire. You see that? Sin comes by uncontrolled desire. Uncontrolled desire comes from desire. So desire, uncontrolled desire... Sin and death. That's the motion. Desire, uncontrolled desire, sin and death. So God is not involved. This totally upsets many of the reformed theologians. It upsets the reformed theology. The reformed theologians said or they stipulate that in the sovereignty of God, God is responsible for everything. That's reformed theology. God is responsible for everything. So reformed theologians attribute everything that happens to God. Good, bad, evil is all God. You break your leg, they will tell you God did it for a purpose. You are sick, they will tell you God is teaching you a lesson in humility. Your business stops working, you are not making money, they will tell you you've been proud as somebody that has money. So God has to teach you humility with poverty. Or they will tell you God knows that if he allows you to keep making money, you will forget him. That is the theory of the reformed theologians. And what we just explained has debunked not only debunked, it has rusticated. Not only rusticated, it has eradicated. Not only eradicated, it has obliterated. Not only obliterated, it has wiped out. Desire from man, uncontrolled desire from man produces sin. And sin from man produces Death. Is that clear here? And if you observe carefully, James gave a witness to what Paul said in Romans. We are for, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. Therefore, all have sinned. Same thing Paul said, James said. God cannot do everything. Say that with me very loud. Can he steal? Can he fornicate? Can he be tempted? Can he do everything? God cannot do everything. He's not a tyrant. He's a father. May I go again? Because if you say God can do everything, you make a mess of everything the Bible teaches. You make a mess. Because if God, therefore, can do everything, it means God is behind sin. 
That is why you will hear people ask you questions when you go for evangelism. If God knew that Adam will sin, why did God create Adam? Have you had such questions? They are questioning the integrity of God and those kind of questions are to question God's character. If God is a good God like you claim and he's a loving father as you claim and he knows everything, why did he create Adam and gave him Eve for them to sin and punish them? And those conclusions are coming from illit illiterates. Illiterates. With every respect. A man that concludes like that is an illiterate. With all respect. So you cannot say God is involved in everything. That would be an absolute error. So if God is not involved... That means God is not even involved in our desires. God is not even involved in our desires. Because if he's involved in our desires, then it means he's involved in sin. Because sin comes out of our desires. Did you watch the motions? Did you observe the motions? All right? Lust uncontrollable desire that will produce sin that will produce death and all of it begins with man god is not involved it begins with man you hear somebody say i wouldn't have done it if god didn't want it somebody will tell a girl if god want me to marry you whether you like it or not i will marry you ah, stop that thing who are you intimidating with witchcraft? <laughs> How can a believer be singing, What's gonna be is gonna be. What goes up must come down. What's gonna be is gonna be. And there's nothing we can do about it. What? What thing soever you desire. When you pray. <laughs> believe that you receive and you shall. What are you talking about? What's gonna be is not gonna be. What we allow is what is gonna be. What we stop is stopped. What we permit is permitted. Somebody shout, I am in authority here. What's gonna be is not gonna be. Amen. Someone said after God in the world today, the most powerful thing is the media. But don't forget that the media is a product of man's will. The media is a product of man's will. Man has proven to be able to do anything. What are you talking about? To a point where man has proven that there is no God. Yes? They have proven it to themselves. That's why there is a, a religion of atheists. These are people that have convinced themselves beyond every shadow of doubt that there is no God. That's the level to which man has gone. Don't underestimate man. Could you ever have imagined that a time will come where you will carry a piece of device and be seeing the whole world from your device sitting down in one place? That's man at work. Who would have believed that a big iron will carry 800 people and suspend them in the sky for 26 hours. Who will have thought of that? Watch man. Hey. For God to hand over a planet as massive as this to man. He says let them have dominion over. It means he has put in man the configuration. That can tame the planet. And make the planet obey man. Not Christian. He didn't give it to Christians. He gave it to man. You don't have to be a Christian to manage this planet. You just have to be a man and know how to engage your mental faculty. That's why most of the inventors are not Christians. They are not Christians. They are people who dutifully give themselves to creativity.